So back here in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, as the New England Bowling Association title matchup, James Burt uh, against Joe Navarro. And he's done a uh, hard drum, Brian Arizari, and it'll be the youngster. Finishing up strong in the semifinals B matchup. Starting things off here in the title game. And we'll get a big strike there, and uh, it's a big weekend uh, in sports in itself with the Yankees versus the Red Sox. And we have Walpole, Mass, uh, versus East Patchogue, New York. A lot of coverage, a lot of sports <laughs> here. So New York versus Massachusetts here in the title match. And yet again, you, you see two different approaches. James Byrne, more of a finesse kind of approach. And uh, we saw with a Navarro with that straight up high backswing and able to deliver with some velocity. Exactly. Well, you're seeing James right here. He just threw the ball a little bit harder because the lanes are starting to break down a little bit. So he's going to keep his line. He threw a little bit harder. If you notice, Joe, on his first frame, he probably went eight boards to the left to try to catch a lot more of that oil in the middle of the lane. And he actually crossed over, got a big break on the Brooklyn side, and that's how he started. But uh, each of these bowlers are seeing the way the lanes are breaking down a little bit right now. And on the line is, uh, as we joked around, the white shirt to claim the champion. One of these guys will be the first uh, champion here in the July tournament as Burt uh, winds up uh, leaving up. Uh, one of the pin will have to go for a spare, but if they can throw a 300, $5,000 in their pocket. All right, well, Joe Navarro is the only one who can do it right now, so we're going to see what happens. James throws a great ball, leaves a stone nine. Easy spare to make, but kind of hurts. That's kind of how I throw the ball. Well, did you see? It went nice and straight. That plastic ball, it's not going to hook, so you just have to put it in the right place because if you miss a little bit, <laughs> it ain't coming back. Yeah, but that's how I bowl. I, I, if I can get over 100, I'm good. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> able to come up with a big strike. So you can see the lane's breaking down a little bit. Navarro goes way left. He's able to put that little bit of a hook in his game now. So that's going to be a big benefit if he can continue making good shots. Because the more room you have to miss just a little bit, the more you relax. See that ball come back now? The more you relax and make better shots. It's going to be a little bit tougher for James. See him way left on the approach. He's actually putting the ball down about 23, 24. He's starting to feel it. He's carrying it on over from where he finished up with three strikes to end the semifinals and uh, started it off very good here. And it's all about momentum. You, you kind of joked around. There's not enough Red Bull to kind of in the building to keep him down. But James Bird has had to sit down. He was practicing a couple leans on down. talking to himself. Yeah. It's just kind of calm down, make a good shot here, keep your speed up. Good ball. Perfect shot. That's what he's got to do. He doesn't, he can't look at his opponent. Just talk him through each shot, make sure he hits the 1-3 and gives himself an opportunity to throw a strike. Watch how balanced he is right here. He's just down. Nice, doesn't fall off balance, just super strong at the end. And when they keep that left hand out, as you saw there with Bert, that's more of just balancing because you're on one foot. Exactly. And he doesn't have that big of a backswing either. Ball crept a little bit to the left. I think, again, the lanes are drying out a little bit. We saw Joe move way to the left, and he's using the drier part of the lane. James is still kind of where he's comfortable with. He's got to actually throw it a little bit harder or move left. He's going to make that decision. Well, you know you've been around this game a while because on his first practice, though, you looked at me and said, he looked at himself and said, what happened to the lane? I, I just played this, you know, maybe about 25 minutes ago. Exactly. So he, make, he makes a spare with no problem. But he's got to be thinking on that left lane, I either have to throw it harder or I have to move left a little bit. And again, it's not 
a marathon. It's an absolute sprint. So here at Bradley Bull, one of the hot spots here in Windsor Locks for uh, the NEBA tournament. BullNEBA.com for more information for the New England uh, Bowlers Association. 44 lane synthetic surface compared to the wood. And that's just for the proprietor to have better maintenance, cheaper maintenance. Another big strike is Navarra. He is red hot right I'll now. I'll tell you what, you saw the recovery right there. So what happened was he moved left, which, caught, which, which gets more oil when he throws the ball. So he's in the, he's in the heavy oil. The ball skids a little bit longer, and it holds all the friction to the very end. You're going to see this ball get way to the right, but there's enough now where it just came back, hit the 1-3. And exploded. Yeah, that's all you need to do. When you throw the big hook like that and you put the revs on it, just hit the 1-3 pocket, and you'll give yourself a very good opportunity to strike. And they got that one right there, and uh, he's starting to uh, think about uh, that potential five grand purse for a 300 here in the title game as well as the uh, purse for winning uh, the title uh, but it also makes that ride easier all the way back to new york and i think on the weekends the ferry only got another hour for that one he's gonna have to drive around you might not have to go to the dollar menu either <laughs> that extra cash in your pocket If you notice, Jim just fell off balance a little bit to the right. Feet got a little fast, fell off balance a little to the right. He doesn't have that explosive release in those revs to bring it back. So if he misses to the right, it's going to stay right, and that's just what happened. So where is he at mentally after watching Navarra just explode 10 pin after 10 pin? you got to know you're in trouble now. <clears throat> um, anything can happen. We've only covered five frames, but... If you're James, you have to throw strikes here because uh, Joe is just at will throwing strikes and he's got the one three pocket locked in. You know he's comfortable. You gotta put a little pressure. Don't forget, Joe's only been bowling two years. Yeah. So if James is not able to put any kind of pressure on, on Joe, he's just gonna relax and stay right where he is. See, he moved left a little bit, and the speed was up. When you move left, you don't want to increase your speed because you're going to hit more oil. It's going to skid more. So when you move left, you actually have to slow it down and get a little bit lower. He actually stood straight up, threw the ball hard, and he caught more oil in the beginning. That's why the ball didn't finish at the end. He's got another 2 four, 5 he's looking at. And right now, Navarre getting antsy to, to throw that bowling ball, walking around, pacing. That's tough. I don't think he's going to make that. Oh, he did. When you have to move into the middle of the lane and catch more oil, you have to do two things. Slow the ball down a little bit, and you have to change your release. Instead of a 12 or 11 o'clock, you actually have to point your index finger and get a 10 o'clock roll. That way, it, it spins with a 10 o'clock roll, and when it hits the dry, it'll finish for you. So the next time you're out there practicing, practice moving inside. You've got to throw it slower. And then Navarro right now is starting to set his eyes on that uh, extra $5,000. And I think the, uh, the NEBA faculty and staff are starting to piece it together. Do we really have this money? Yeah, the insurance <laughs> policy. They're looking it up right now. Says Halfway he, there. Says here on his bio he's bold 40. 300 games in two years that's that's ridiculous that's five more than you <laughs> <laughs> i've only been bowling 38 more years yeah. too Jim. and he didn't get it that's called the greek church right there just came up a little bit. A what? A Greek church you got to know the lingo where did you come up with i this don't know stuff? who came up with it it's years old it's that's called the Greek church or grandma's teeth. Which one do you like better? Do you want, do you want to come up with a, a CPTV sports uh, bowling term? <laughs> I didn't come up with that. Uh, He's just going to go for the three in the right-hand corner just to make sure he gets as many pins as he can. 
which he did. He's still way up in the driver's seat. But the pressure of the $5,000 is gone. Yeah. It's something that he doesn't want to do, though, is just to kind of find that complacency. He wants to still attack the yeah. lanes. He's got a great ball going. He's got great reaction. His way up on his opponent right here, you don't want to change a thing. You, you just you want, you want to, to continue to approach it as it's a, it's a close match. Yeah. We see too many times in a lot of sports where you kind of go into that prevent defense or uh, you're up by so much and continue to attack, you kind of just settle back with That's it. That's how the rain's back. That's how my Miami Dolphins lose all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Big Can't, strike by Burt. He gets a good break. He tripped the four pin right there. Uh, he knows he's still not completely out of it, which is good, but he's got to he's got to go off the sheet. He's got to throw the next. And throw on the next our four or five. on our little bio sheets here, we had asked uh, something interesting about their game prep, and James, the only one to answer, so I will highlight him. And he says that he's just trying to figure out where not to throw the ball. What do you what do you say to that? I congratulate him for being that honest. I don't think we're all that honest right there, but he's absolutely right. That hurt. That all but finished the match for James. He went left, which I, th I think is the right thing to do. He didn't kind of lower his speed, though, but he just got that ball a little bit too left to target. It never got right of the head pin. It never set in the 1-3 pocket. It was pretty much high right when it got out of his hand. You can tell right there. He actually went after that split just, just to, to get as many pins as he can. It's tough when you know your opponent's right in the driver's seat and he's so far up and there's nothing you can do about it. James still has the opportunity to shoot 202. John has got a 261 possible, so. There's your math skills coming out. Hey, I did well in math. Math and lunch. Lunch was my favorite subject. Math and lunch. <laughs> so Navarra drying off that right hand. Trying to get himself his uh, first title. He's only been playing two years. Uh, making the trip up from Long Island up here to Windsor Locks. Bradley Lanes right across the street from Bradley International Airport. Uh, the main hub here in the state of Connecticut. You know, as I think of this place, so many great bowlers came through this place over the years. This was one of the professional bowlers tour stops every single year. So Earl Anthony, Mark Roth, Johnny Petraglia, all the names that really started this game. Uh, and you can go even further back. They've all been in this building. So the ghosts of the past, it's a pretty cool place to be. Now, did you grow up playing here? And, and if so... How has this time, you know, we talked about change a little earlier on in the broadcast. How has this place changed from maybe old school bowling alley to now with the new age with the, you know, turn the lights down with the cosmic bowl and play the music for the kids and that kind of stuff? When, when you think about the sport and the entertainment factor for everybody, you have to stay with the time. So you've got the electronic scores, you've got the disco balls and the movie uh, speakers and the movie screens and things like that and you have to ap appeal to everybody but from an from a, a a bowler who's been in the sport for so long this kind of still is a magical place you know a lot of things have taken place here right under this roof and uh it's, it's just a really cool place to be and i think all the bowlers respect that uh the, the bowlers who are really serious about the sport they know bradley Bradley Bowl is, is definitely one of the places in Connecticut that uh, has a lot of history. And especially with the with the temperature outside today, nice and cool in here. I like it for that fact. Where else can you go on a day like today? You get air conditioning. You might not even have it in your house. Who knows? So Joe is really in the driver's seat here. Got to take a look at the score again to see if it's actually locked out. I'm relying on you. Well, James has a possible 202, and Joe is sitting right now at 200. So all we need is two pins from Joe to lock up his first Amoeba title.
to add insult to injury. Do everything you're supposed to do, put the ball in the right place. Week seven. Yeah, it's been a long two days for uh, both these guys, James Bird and uh, Joe Navarro. Going to be a little bit of a long drive back up to Walpole, Mass. And it's going to be a nice drive, and he's going to have to go all the way around. Instead of taking the ferry as the last ferry departed two minutes ago. Ooh, I think it's uh, worth it. From Bridgeport back to Port Chef. I've taken that ride, and if uh, none of you have ever done that ride, I definitely suggest that even if you go there and don't even get off the ferry and turn around, it, it's just cool to kind of go down the sound and, you know, a nice day sit up on the top deck and uh, about an hour and 15 minutes, and boom, you're right there. James changes balls, gets a little different reaction, and look what happens. Yeah, he's chuckling on himself. You know, as we said before, these, these tournament bowlers, they walk in the door with four, five, six bowling, but you got to know every single one what they do. Different reaction. He gets the ball down, and you can see it's got about five boards to come back to the left. This one does. So it's the way it's drilled. It's the weight block, and it's what the cover is made of. and actually uh, rolls on the lane a little differently than the other ball that he had. So he, he needs two more strikes to throw 192. That's respectable. Now, not a, not a large crowd here uh, for the semifinals in the title matchup, but, you know, we're seeing a, a couple of these guys stick around and watch. You know, from your standpoint, to, will you go on a, you know, maybe a Friday or a Saturday night to just watch bowling? And if you do so, uh, what do you gain from that? Is it someone, you know, is it like sitting and watching a baseball game or a football game for you? Well, I would venture to guess that none of these guys here are married. So, <laughs> my wife. It, it would is kill getting me. late. It is getting late. <laughs> my wife would kill me if I was out watching bowling. I bowl two nights a week during the year, and that's enough for her. And if I were even to go home and say, "Honey, can I bowl in tournaments?" I don't know. Yeah, It'd be you, rough. You talked, you talked about the commitment, and and we've been here for a little bit. Well, you actually, you spend the whole weekend. Whether you qualify on a Saturday or Sunday, you're, if, if you're bowling well, you're going to be here all day. And for me, I've got young kids. I coach their baseball teams. I go to all their baseball games. I'm involved so much with my kids, uh, and they're too young to be on the Nita circuit here. So I'm going to miss out a lot on my kids and my family stuff. So that's kind of why I choose not to bowl in the tournaments on the weekends. I have enough fun for 36 weeks of the year bowling in my leagues. I really want to be home for my kids. But if I had the opportunity, I would definitely watch Neva bowling. This is this is <laughs> great bowling. That a big spare there by Navarro. And he had said he only really needed uh, just a couple more pins to solidify it. Right. So, so James threw a 188 in his last game, and uh, we've got 229 possibility if John throws a strike here. So a great victory. Victory number one for Joe Navarra. And he finished it with a, a nice strike and a good matchup. And uh, we had four guys enter on in, one of them looking for a title. None of them have ever claimed it. But right there, the 20-year-old from East Patchogue, New York, able to claim the uh, NEMA title here in the July tournament. We'll come back up uh, with a conversation with him right here on CPTV Sports. 